the Danish gambit, tricky, aggressive, and that's why it has been chosen by many white players. But imagine a line where we can not only shock white opponent, but in most of the cases, it is black who get the opening advantage. Sounds interesting, right? Let's get started. E4, E5, D4, E captures D4, and now white plays this dangerous gambit starting with C3. If you check the database from here, the majority of the games continue with D capture C3 or the move D5, where I think white is well prepared. But imagine my surprise, which is even not there in this top five choices and yet completely diffuse the whole white setup. Are you ready? Look at this. Queen to e7. <laughs> and I should say, what a move. Because this weird queen move can create so many problems for the white camp. First thing first, we are attacking on e4. So as I have highlighted over here, these are the most popular choices by the white. And against each of them, black planning of campaign is very simple, yet very deadly. So what we are up to is, we want to do a queen trade so that this extra pawn do count in almost all queenless middle game. Not to mention, there are some cool tricks and traps exist in this lines as well. For example, let's start with fourth most popular choice, knight to f3, played in roughly 1400 games. Hen White's big idea is that after queen captures e4 and the move bishop to e2, he want to quickly castle on the king side and exploit black major pieces on the e file. But unfortunately for White, black hit him with the first trick on the table. Yup, this killer move d3 wins the game on the spot as white bishop is hanging. So after the four sequence, queen captures d3, queen captures d3, and bishop captures d3, we achieve our goal, removing the queen and becoming a pawn up so that with the accurate play, this is definitely a winning position from the opening stage. Okay, let's start with the white's most top choice, bishop to d3, defending the pawn. We will hit back in the center with d5, whereupon queen to e2 is by far the most popular choice. And I can't tell you how many people has fallen for this, as after d captures e4, it doesn't matter how waver white recapture. Once again, black quickly get a winning position. For example, let's start with queen captures e4, which actually helps black what he wants to do. So we are more than happy to do this queen trade with this forcing line. Bishop to f5, queen captures e7, knight captures e7, if the bishop moves anywhere, then the c3 pawn drops, where white will be a clear pawn down. So white has to go with this bishop exchange. And after this, once again, he cannot capture on d4, as after knight captures d4, completely winning with an extra pawn. So the fourth sequence continue with g4, hitting the knight first, so that once the knight moves, 
then white can capture on d4. So at first sight, this looks like a completely equal position. But nope, after black's next reply, that is h5, black is almost winning in all of this line. White has two options, whether to move the pawn or to protect it. If we play the move g5, then by force, black wins the pawn with the following sequence, knight to c6, knight to e2, knight to f5, bishop to e3, but after castle on the queen side, white cannot introduce the third defender. That means a d4 pawn is a complete goner. Well, some of you may say, I don't need to move the pawn where I can protect it with the move f3. Whereupon, black has another nice tactical sequence. Knight to c6, knight to e2, castle on the queen side, bishop to e3. And yes, indeed, there is no third piece to attack on d4. But this time, black has equally strong reply, knight to d5, which by force, winning the game. The point is, after bishop to f2, black can play the move knight to b4, where he has a double threat, number one, fork on c2, number two, d3 check, nap the bishop, and then take on d4. Well. To parry both the thread, white has to play king to d2, to whom black can respond with this very nice move, bishop to c5, once again winning the important d pawn. The second option, bishop captures e4, is even the worst choice. Because after knight to f6, it doesn't matter wherever this bishop goes. Our next sequence is pretty obvious. We exchange the queen and then take on c3, whereupon the end result is. Yup, we are pawn up, and although white has some pieces developed, I don't think so with the queenless middle game, this has been justified. So with the better preparation, it is certainly black who is for the choice. The second most popular choice by the white cam is to capture back with the pawn. But I don't think so, this is great, as after simple queen captures e4, white is already having some issues, as he cannot play queen to e2, as after queen exchange, we get to our familiar territory and bishop to e2 drop the g2 pawn. So by force, he has to play bishop to e3. Whereupon, you can choose either of this move. Let's say here, black first plays bishop to b4 check and after knight to c3, indeed continue with knight to f6. Okay, white still cannot develop light square bishop, so he continue with knight to f3. And his idea is very simple. He wants to play bishop to d3 and castle on the king side. But exactly here, black can unleash a nice cunning move, knight to g4. So if you look at the database here, in the majority of the game, White has tried these two moves, but I am afraid they are not enough to save the game. For example, let's start with bishop to d3, bad move, and the reason is black has this nice tactic on the table, knight catches e3. So if white takes this knight, then we can deliver this queen check, munching yet another pawn. So by force, white has to go for the queen trade. Bishop takes e4, knight takes d1, and after rook takes d1, 
yup, time and time again, we get our goal. Queenless middle game with a clear pawn advantage. So bishop to d3 is right out of the equation. The second move, queen to d2, is neither good as well. Because once again we can take on e3 and white really doesn't want to exchange queen where he has a pawn down. So f captures e3, what else? Whereupon we can simply respond with queen to e7. And as I have shown by the arrows, black has a very simple plan. He wants to play d5 and then reroute this b knight to the f6. And in all these instances, white backward e pawn gives black a good opening advantage. Last but not least, what to do against the move queen captures d4, which at first sight looks very logical. You are defending on e4 and regaining your material back. But it has a drawback that it gives up some tempos to the black camp. Knight to c6, hitting the queen. Queen to e3. And now, what else but to pressurize the e pawn? Knight to f6, bishop to d3, and yup, this thematic break, d5, whereupon black has already sets up a cunning trick. Well, if you look at the database here, more than 350 games goes with e captures d5, which I'm afraid a big time blunder, as black has a stunning reply. Did you spot it? Congratulations if you see the move knight to e5. <laughs> and after this, white is in a huge trouble. Well, the threat is very obvious. Knight takes d3. And even after the base sequence, bishop to b5 check, c6, pawn takes c6, b takes c6. Yes, indeed voluntarily black has destroyed his pawn structure on the queen side but he has the tactical point that is after bishop to e2 this knight to g4 move can create wonders for the black camp as the knight is attacking the queen white has two popular choices the first option bishop captures g4 is absolutely bad and I won a quick game against 2200 with the following forcing sequence. Bishop captures g4. So the threat is knight to d3 check. My opponent plays knight to e2. Now I renew the threat with rook to d8. So obvious enough, white castle on the king side. But after black's next reply, rook to d3, more or less, the game has been finished. White queen has to stay in protection with the knight, so the only move here is queen to e4. Whereupon, after black's next reply, white get rude shock. Boom! <laughs> what a move! Now, obvious enough, I think you already see that if white foolishly take this bishop, then after knight to f3 check, he simply loses his queen. So that is right out of the equation. And in the game, my opponent indeed play rook to e1, which in fact allow me to finish the game very quickly with rook to d1. After the rook exchange, the dust has been settled down and one can easily see that it is black who has come up with a clear peace advantage. Last but not least, what happens if your opponent continue with queen to g3? Well, this time around, black has a nice tactical shot. So before I move on, I'd like you to pause this video and find out a killer move here, which wins on the spot.
Are you ready? Did you find this amazing move? Bishop to a6. A nice deflection move. So that if white foolishly take this bishop, then his king get force checkmated after the following sequence. Knight to d3, a double discover check. King to d2. Now you give queen check which by force lure the white king in the center. Let's say king to c2. Queen captures c1. King captures d3. Rook to d8. King to e4. And knight to f6. And I think I should stop here as chess engine suggests that there is a mate in 7. Something which you definitely want to try out as an exercise. The best white can do over here is play the move bishop to e3. But after this, the sequence is very easy. Yup, you take on e2. Knight takes e2. Now you give this check. If the king goes to the d file, then queen to d7 is a very strong reply. So by force, white king has to go on f1 square. But after this, yup, the simplest continuation. Knight takes e3, queen takes e3, queen takes, pawn takes, and now the sting in the tail, knight takes b2, whereupon, yup, indeed, we have equal material on the board, but look at the horrible pawn structure white is having, and not so surprising, black obtain a nagging edge from this position. There is a high profile game in the database where black quickly get an upper hand with the following sequence. Knight to d2 happen. Black plays castle on the queen side, attacking the knight. Knight to d4 has been played. c5. Knight to f3. But after black's next reply, that is knight to a4, I think white is already losing the plot here. He tried rook to c1, and although engine's top choice is g6 here, I like what black has done in the game, namely rook to d3, and winning important pawn. That's it guys, I hope you enjoy and learn this high profile tricky line against the Danish gambit. Remember at this point, play the move queen to e7 and it doesn't matter however white continue. Black's overall plan that is to exchange the queen and enter into the pawn advantage middle game can be achieved in most of this variation whereupon the most important factor is has to forget about his attacking stuff and miserly try to defend his passive position works out very well in the slides. Well, thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment and I will meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.